horrified at what they see on closer look of live Hurricane Irma coverage. As repair work begins in Houston and Texas is recovering from Hurricane Harvey, another part of the southern United States braces for impact. Florida is once again in the crosshairs of a big bad storm, Hurricane Irma, and it might get worse yet. Hurricanes aren't a new phenomenon in Florida, but there's never a time when one doesn't bring mayhem and destruction. Thankfully, advances in technology make it easier to predict when bad storms are coming and the people of Florida are able to get ready for the damage that's coming. They're also able to see what might be coming after Irma leaves its damage behind. The satellite imagery shows that Irma is coming, and also bringing some friends. The Category 5 storm has at least two more big storms hot on her heels. Via News 4 Jax All eyes are on Hurricane Irma as it rampages through the Caribbean, but it's not alone. Tropical storms Jose and Katia strengthened Wednesday afternoon, bringing the number of hurricanes churning in the Atlantic Basin to three. It's the first time since 2010 that three active hurricanes have been in the Atlantic, according to CNN Weather. As of 11 p.m. ET, Jose was out over the open Atlantic, not far from where Irma was a couple of days ago. Jose is similar to Irma in the sense that it's a Cape Verde hurricane, a type of storm that forms in the far eastern Atlantic, near the Cape Verde Islands, now known as Cabo Verde. But that's where the similarities end. At this time, Jose is not expected to follow the same path as Irma. Instead, it's expected to curve up into the open Atlantic and become a major hurricane, Category 3 or more, with winds up to 115 miles per hour. The closest landmass Jose will approach is the northern Leeward Islands, the same one Zerma just devastated. It's not close enough to cause direct destruction, but close enough to potentially bring another round of wind and rain to the ravaged islands. Katia became a hurricane in the southern Gulf of Mexico in a region not too far from where Harvey formed two weeks ago. Unlike Harvey, which moved to north and strengthened rapidly, Katia is expected to stick close to Mexico. Katia was located 190 miles northeast of Veracruz, Mexico, and there's a watch in effect for a small portion of the Mexican coast there. While these storms are somewhat predictable, there's always a chance that things will change. The trajectory for Hurricane Irma has changed a few times already, and the current models are still just highly educated guesses. That leaves the residents in the possibly affected areas with a lot of questions and no choice but to prepare for the worst. Historically, hurricanes of Irma's magnitude have caused a lot of loss of life and hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars worth of damage. Surviving is, of course, the first thing everyone should be worried about during a storm but surviving has to be followed by living, and those affected by Harvey can tell you that can be difficult when your life is washed away. To add to that, as we saw in Houston over the last few weeks, what the storm spares, the looters may not. These coastal regions are in for a tough fall, and all we can do for the time is wait and watch. There's still a lot unknown about storm number three, Katia, but here is more information from our source about Irma and Jose. Hurricane Irma remains an extremely dangerous Category 5 storm Thursday morning as the eye of the storm moves west northwest off the northern coast of Hispaniola, the National Hurricane Center said. The NHC 8 a.m. advisory shows the storm heading for the Turks and Caicos Islands, just over 1,000 miles from Jacksonville. The powerful storm had maximum sustained width of 180 miles per hour and was moving west northwest at 17 miles per hour. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 50 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 185 miles. On the forecast track, landfall in or close to South Florida is expected Sunday. Tropical storm force winds could develop over South Florida late Friday night. Jacksonville could see tropical storm force gusts beginning Saturday night with hurricane winds developing Sunday evening through Monday. Jose intensified into a hurricane late in the day on Wednesday. The NHC found sustained wind speeds of 75 miles per hour as the storm moved to the west northwest at 16 miles per hour. Jose will move into slightly warmer waters and may intensify, before curving to the north aiming towards Bermuda by next week. According to the National Hurricane Center, 
Jose should move toward the west or west northwest for the next three to four days at a slightly faster rate of forward speed as it moves south of the deep layer Azores Bermuda High. In about four to five days, Jose should turn toward the northwest and slow as it reaches the southwestern periphery of the high. The storm is currently in zone that is conducive for intensification due to the ample amount of mid-level moisture and relatively low vertical shear, however, the storms is expected to travel to west northwest by the end of the week. As the storm moves further north intensification should remain flat, and flat.